For this chapter, all you need to know is how to prepare a statement of cash flows by the indirect method. You do not need to worry about preparing a statement of cash flows using the direct method. That would be covered in intermediate accounting. When using the indirect method to calculate cash flows from operating activities, you need to look at two places. First, you need to go to the income statement and find net income, depreciation. Also, if there's deple depletion and amortization, you would look for those as well and they would be treated identical to depreciation. You would also take a look at any gains and losses on sale of long-term assets. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to keep these examples very simple so that you can understand the steps in coming up with your operating cash flows. This example is a company with all cash transactions. There are no balance sheet items, so there are no balance sheet current assets and current liabilities. Their income statement is presented here. This company had revenues of 10,000, expense of 3,000. Depreciation is shown separately and it's $1,000, which gives a net income of $6,000. Now the question is, how much cash should the company have from operating activities? Before we prepare the cash flow statement, let's try to figure out how much cash did this company actually have? We know that they received $10,000 cash. We know that they spent $3,000 in cash for their expenses. And then they had $1,000 depreciation. But however, depreciation is not a cash expense. It is an expense in accounting terms, but it's not a cash expense. We do not pay $1,000 for any expense called depreciation. Depreciation is simply allocating the cost of your long-term asset over its useful life. So this company should have had $7,000 of cash. How did they get $7,000? It's $10,000 that they received, their revenue, minus $3,000 in expenses. They should have had $7,000. So when we prepare our statement of cash flows, we should have $7,000 as cash flow from operating activities. So now let's go ahead and do the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement always starts off with operating activities. When you're preparing a cash flow statement using the indirect method, your starting point is always net income. So we start off with net income of $6,000. Then we have to go to our income statement and look for any depreciation and gains or losses on sale of long-term assets. Here we don't have any gains or losses, but we do have depreciation. So we pull out depreciation. Now depreciation was subtracted to get at net income, but since depreciation is not a cash item, we add it back to figure out how much our actual cash was. So. In our operating activities, we add back depreciation of $1,000. That gives our cash flow from operating activities to be equal to $7,000. And if you remember, that was what we figured out a little while back, that it should have been $7,000. So when we prepare a cash flow statement using the indirect method, you start off with net income, then when you find depreciation, you have to add it back to net income in under operating activities. Let's take a look at another example. Again, same assumptions as before. This time, what they've given us is revenues of 10,000, all cash, expenses 3,000, no depreciation, but gain on sale of $2,000. That gives our net income to be 9,000 question is how much cash did the company have from operating activities? Just like before, let's try to figure out how much cash they should have had. We know that they received $10,000 cash, they spent $3,000, but how about the gain of $2,000? The gain of $2,000 is not a cash income or expense. We calculated the gain by taking our sales proceeds and subtracting our book value. So it's a calculation. There was no cash of 2000 received. Now we would have received some cash when we sold the equipment or the long-term asset. 
However, as you know, sale of long-term assets, the cash received will go in your investing section of your cash flow statement. So for operating activities, we have to make an adjustment for our gain on sale. How much cash should we have? The 10,000 minus 3,000, which would have been $7,000 cash. Let's go ahead and prepare the cash flow statement. And we're going to look at operating activities. We start off with net income whenever we prepare the cash flow statement using the indirect method. Our net income was 9,000. Then we have to go to our income statement and look up if there were any gains, losses, or depreciation. We don't, the only thing we have here is the gain on sale. What do we do with the gain on sale? Since the gain was added to arrive at net income in your income statement and the gain was not a cash item, we had to subtract the gain in our operating activities section of your cash flow statement. So we subtract the gain on sale of 2000 and that will give our cash flows from operating activities to be equal to 7000 which is what we figured out earlier. Now, if this was a loss on sale, what would we do? For a gain we subtracted, if it's a loss, we would have added it back because again, a loss on sale would have just been a calculation, it's not a cash transaction. So now you know that whenever you prepare your cash flow statement using the indirect method, you start off with net income, you have to go and find depreciation on your income statement and then add it back in your cash flow statement and if there are any gains or losses you have to go find them again from your income statement and if it's a gain you subtract it in your operating activities section on your cash flow and if it's a loss you would add it back to your operating activities section. Now let's look at what we need to go and look at from the balance sheet. We're looking at the comparative balance sheet. Comparative balance sheet means we have to have balance sheets for two years, say 2011 and 2012. That would be called comparative balance sheets. We, from the comparative balance sheets, we need to look at any increase or decrease in each current asset and we ignore cash. So you know that your current assets consist of cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and so on and so forth. We do not look at cash, we ignore cash, but we have to look at an increase or decrease from 2011 to 2012 for each current asset. And then we have to take a look at the increase or decrease of each current liability as well. I'm going to show you a rule that you need to follow when you're looking at comparative balance sheets. You're going to look at two balance sheets, let's say 2011 and 2012. Then in those balance sheets, you're going to look at the current assets section of your balance sheet. For current assets, you're going to ignore cash, but you're going to look at each individual current assets other than cash and this is the rule that you need to follow. If from 2011 to 2012 a particular current asset increased, you take the amount of the increase and you subtract it in your cash flow statements from operating activities section. If the amount in your balance sheet went down, you have to go and increase by that same amount in your operating activities section. If you notice, when current assets increase, the cash flows decrease. If your current assets decrease, your cash flows increase. This is what I call an inverse relationship. So if you remember that current assets have an inverse relationship to operating activities in your cash flow statement, it'll be easy for you to remember the adjustments you need to make. I will show you an example in a little bit, but let's first look at how current liabilities are affected. For liabilities, you're also looking at comparative balance sheets, which means two years. So let's say from 2011 to 2012, and you're going to look at each current liability. 
if your current liability increased from one year to the next, your cash flows will also increase under operating activities. And if your current liabilities decreased from one year to the next, your cash flows will also decrease in your operating activities section. When you're looking at liabilities, see how when current liabilities increase, so do the operating activity cash flows. And when they decrease, the operating activities cash flows also decrease. I tell my students to remember that their current liabilities have a direct relationship with cash flows from operating activities. So current assets have an inverse relationship with cash flows in operating activities and current liabilities have a direct relationship with cash flows from operating activities. In the next section I will show you an example of how this works when you're preparing your cash flows from operating activities.